Hello viewer and welcome to my Payday 2 Heist tier list video. Now that the final piece of content for the game has been released and we're all gearing up for Payday 3, I thought it fitting to share my thoughts in tier list format. Here you can see the 7 tiers and their brief summaries. For a more detailed explanation please see the description and as a bit of foreshadowing I'm going to morph this list so you know that as a biased fan of the game I'm going to rate most missions higher. Also a small disclaimer, this list is of course subjective and will in all likelihood differ from yours. And since there are many heists to go through, this will be less of a detailed analysis and more of a quick glance and impressions that I got over the years of playing these maps. Let's begin. Aftershock. Disliked more for safes rather than the map itself and it's not as bad as people think. Has decent variation with the truck spawns and a good bit of verticality. It's mainly held back by absurdly long stretches of time when you were doing nothing and just waiting for bile. The truck is slow, not that fun to drive in, prone to getting stuck and is a death sentence on higher difficulties. C tier. Alaskan deal. A fun story moment with Locke and the map plays well enough. It has a few brutal sniper spawns and the end can get very overwhelming if you don't escape immediately. And left in the cold is Carl's best track he made for this game, B tier. The LSO heist. Okay, this one's gonna be a bit lower on my list than for most. The idea of a heist being set during a concert fits well, but nobody evacuating the crowd during loud is crazy. The mission's a somewhat linear design and objective placement means you're going to have to run from the top to the basement multiple times. Overkill really wanted to squeeze out all they could with this one and in turn the Alesso heist got very repetitive very quickly. Moving bags is a pain and loud, especially solo, although escaping in casing mode after completing the heist in stealth is a nice touch. I wish more heists would have tried this. C tier. Art gallery. Decent in stealth, but saw mandatory and loud. If you don't bring one, get ready to wait. Moving the bags is annoying as always, unless you use the nifty window shortcut. It's super short when sneaking and not worth the bother when loud. D tier. Bank heist. The OG. Even though outshined by more complex maps, the very simple yet effective setup is still fun. What I most appreciate from this era of heists is that enemies don't spawn on top of you. Unlike other missions I know, it's mainly held back by an archaic stealth loop and being nothing more than just waiting for a drill. It still serves as a great introduction to the game and is worth a C tier. Beneath the mountain. An expensive murky water base with weirdly limited pre-planning. It has extra loot that's fun to get since the hack is only one minute long. The map itself is split into three parts that get progressively more difficult. You don't spend more than a few minutes on any one objective and because of that the pacing feels very good. Breaching the front gate, dodging the ceiling turrets, hacking open the vaults, meeting Locke, blowing up radars and escaping in a helicopter. I really like this one. A tier. The big bank. You know it, I know it, this is S tier. A beautiful map accompanied by the best level design you'll see from Overkill. The replayability is top tier, a ton of meaningful pre-planning choices, different computer, keycard, vault and security room locations, the piggy, even the map's core layout can change. The only nitpick I have is these bags, but you only need to get four and they seem to be more of a payday problem. To this day, I don't think they topped this absolute gem. Big oil. Another excellent heist. Even though the first day stealth was a nice challenge before they nerfed it, now it's a cakewalk and feels somewhat unnecessary. Collecting assets in day one for day two is a great idea, but is a bit bloated by a few useless pickups. Moving on to the main attraction, the second day is sadly not fully stealthable, but still fun to see how far you can go without triggering the alarm. The puzzle is amusing when you know what you're doing, but can be frustrating when you can't find the notes. Dude, the lights! Fun heist. A tier. The biker heist. This one's a mixed bag. The first heist is small and not that interesting, even though I can appreciate the objective RNG. Also, the bikes feel like forklifts, so thank goodness you only get to use them for a total of 30 seconds. Day 2 is way better, taking place on a moving train. It's a great set piece with decent replayability thanks to randomized wagon locations. The boss is bullet spongy and the cops breed fast, so their default spawn numbers on this map can feel like a proper clusterfuck. C tier. Birth of Sky. Packed to the brim with wacky ideas. Right. Taking over a plane and parachuting down to a small town. On the ground you have plenty of variation of the pallet spawns and unlike Bile, Locke flies in quick and the heist barely wastes any time before sending you to the sewers. There you gotta move fast before every square inch gets replaced with police and your internals get replaced with bullets. Finally, escape in a janky motorboat. A wild ride indeed. A tier. Black Cat. A yacht, this time with loud included. It gives you the choice between trying to open the vault or flying it out with a helicopter. The former has more objectives, requires bag moving and rewards more XP. The latter is simpler but more out in the open, thus harder to defend. Both approaches are valid, fun and they even change the escape method at the end. This cool choose your own objective gimmick combined with great visuals, top notch layout and a banger soundtrack really sold this one for me. S tier. Boiling point. Our second snow-covered map manages to stand out even more by having a unique enemy force. New voice lines and everything. Has a good mix of outside, indoors and very indoor areas. However, the outside feels too open and is my least favorite part of the map. The option to stay for a bigger reward is always welcome. And the mad dash through sniper fire at the end always ends up with me down. B tier. 
border crossing. Widely considered one of the worst heists in the game, and I couldn't agree more. This was thrown together to earn a quick payday and it shows. Reused assets everywhere, the whole thing is open, empty and looks like ass, has a ton of bag moving, getting the weapon objective makes me want to alt F4, and a gimmick that does more bad than good. Splitting the heist into two separate days would have alleviated some frustration. Now failing the much harder second day means having to run through the first. Modded maps are better than this. F tier. Border crystals. Same map as border crossing, just with different objectives? I'm good. F. Breakfast in Tijuana. This one drives me insane. The map itself is decent, on the small side, however, the objectives are probably the worst I have seen in this game, and burning evidence under sprinklers isn't even the worst of it. This new trend of randomly placing an item and having the player search for it, only to show exactly where it is a few minutes later is terrible. Not being able to pick up key items before their objective is triggered is also dumb, and why isn't this door hackable from the start? Could have been so much better. D tier. Breakin feds talking about could have been so much better, this heist probably has one of the biggest guards per square meter ratio I've ever seen. Barely being able to walk two steps forward before having to walk right the fuck back. Not having the capability to vault over this gate is hilarious, but needing to see it before being able to hack the computer is not. Narrow hallways, pretty much no alternate paths, getting sandwiched in Garrett's office, I don't know what Overkill was thinking. Terrible stealth heist. F tier. Brooklyn 1010. The epic John Wick crossover mission manages to differentiate itself from the others with a unique objective. Defending Sharon from the cops while doing the same yourself for the first half is novel, but then turns into a more standard heisting escapade in the second half. The linearity means it's not that replayable, and from the looks of it, Sharon didn't even need our help. Beat here. Brooklyn Bank the third and last snowy map on this list, and it's a decent one. Not stealthable, but tries to do something cool with objective randomness, which can really shake things up unless you get the Drillvan combo 90% of the time like me. The outside of the bank can feel a bit coverless. Oh, and the van still drives itself six years later. Come on guys, be cheer. Buluk's Mansion. The climactic end to the whole Silk Road saga goes out with a bang. The layout and objectives are great for loud and stealth, love that you can choose which entrance to take the inner sanctum, the puzzle is fun to do, and Buluk is satisfying to shoot. Collecting extra loot is unintrusive, the map looks superb and is accompanied by one of the best tracks in the game. S tier. Car shop. I'm not sure how to feel about this one. It plays okay, even though the ground floor is very underutilized, needing to hack the computer before being able to plant the C4 is dumb, and the car's handling is, you know, but I can appreciate what they were trying to do here. B tier. Cook off. The map is tiny, and I'm not a big fan of sitting around and cooking for an indefinite amount of time. It doesn't really do anything for me, and I'd rather just play rats for the full experience. D tier. Counterfeit. Our first remake heist on the list offers a sunny suburbs vibe and a stealth system unlike any other, meaning it's linear and has multiple specific events before things inevitably go loud. The drill is nerfed a tad since there's no more need to keep the electricity on, printing the money is never worth it and the sewer escape is nothing compared to Birth of Sky. I like it. B tier. Crude awakening. Stealing from an oil rig is not something I thought I'd be doing in Payday 2, but here we are. The first part works really well with a puzzle reminiscent of big oil and objectives that can be completed in any order. The next section hits you with a pipe puzzle that's more difficult than it looks, especially when you have to solve it and not die in the process. Third part puts you up against a unique boss that is an absolute bullet sponge, even on lower difficulties. And finally, escape while grabbing loot along the way. Overall, I'd say this heist is an A, but the presentation and absolutely outstanding music boosted to S tier. It oozes style and is a fitting second finale for Payday 2. Cursed Kill Room Halloween heists have never been one of Overkill's strong suits and this is no different. A claustrophobic environment with enemies coming from every direction and no cover? It's just not that fun. The only reason I can see anyone playing this is for the masks and achievements. F tier. Diamond Heist. One of my favorite stealth maps in the game. It's very fun to navigate with just enough guards and objectives that can be done in any order. I wish more missions did that. And thankfully the codes don't randomly fail like in the first game. Loud is great too, more linear than stealth, but it's still entertaining to shoot up the place and throw the CFO out of the helicopter. Also, the bag zipline is a fine addition and means you don't have to bring the bags all the way up to the roof. S tier. Diamond Store. First heist added post launch, and sadly, not that good. A ton of bag moving coupled with pointless waiting around for the van and loud. Apart from having to turn off the alarm before breaking the display cases and farming infamy, this heist has nothing interesting to offer. E tier. The Diamond. The dentist does not miss and comes in with another fantastic mission. Good level design, waiting for the time lock encourages getting some extra loot, the maze puzzle can be tricky, or if you're boring you can always try to get a straight line, only being able to secure 4 bags before the helicopter has to go is weird, never stopped bile before, still amazing though. S tier. The bomb dockyard. 
Here we start the trend of heists being populated by bland warehouses and shipping containers. The map's layout is decent, and I like the amount of randomness with the objective spawn locations. Some bad luck can have you running around a fair bit in stealth though. Also, stealth can take forever if you don't have the keycard spawns memorized. Some direction would have been nice. B tier. Dragon Heist. My main problem with Dragon Heist is that the more interesting upper part of the map is barely used and you'll be spending most of your time in the very exciting warehouse. Other than that, it's compact and not too dissimilar to other simpler maps. See tier. Election Day. I'm fond of the idea of having a Plan C if you fail the objective on day one. The execution's not perfect though. Since Plan C is more fun when going loud and hacking the computer feels like a waste of time, I always ECM rush and tag the wrong truck, which I don't think was the intended idea for this map. For stealth, I enjoy hacking the ballot boxes in day two, even if it now gives me flashbacks. And despite the fact that two thirds of this mission are just warehouses, I really like the concept. A tier. Fire starter. I like the first day a lot. Having the choice between burning or securing the weapons is nice. Opening up a second hangar on Mayhem and above is a creative way to dynamically increase difficulty. Second day is very fun to stealth and what breaking feds should have been. This heist only loses points for having a barely changed bank heist as its finale. A tier. First World Bank. It was already excellent in the first game, but the changes Overkill made remaking it elevated to the top. Fully stealthable and with more variety than before, it has great pacing and layout, you now have to move the bags manually so thank Elmer's beard for this vent shortcut. Definitely my favorite of the remakes. S tier. The Bomb Forest. Everyone's favorite, the Bomb Forest is indeed one of the maps of all time. The whole 45 degree map tilt is weird and is responsible for many unintentional suicides, but is at least unique. The snipers on this map are insane and the sheer openness of some parts can leave you with urges of intentional suicide. Also escaping with anything but a helicopter can be a real pain. Overall though, I think it's still kinda fun, even though it may seem like it's trying to be anything but. C tier. Four stores. Blow up a safe, AFK for five minutes, escape. E. Framing frame. Day one is art gallery, just with extra incentive to collect more paintings. Second day is pointless in stealth, annoying and loud, and feels like a waste of time in both. Day three is better with an excellent layout for stealth, but moving all eight back solo to the furthest vault can be a big chore. Rewarding players with the extra gold after a job well done is good, but loud is tedious, so I usually only sneak this one. In loud it's a C, but in stealth it's an A. So B? Go bank. Another bank, this time very small and with epic funny troll prank calls. Soloing this one stealth can feel rigged, but it is very easy in co-op. In loud, the turret can be overbearing and I will never understand why the cops just don't shoot the balloon. C tier. Goat Simulator. It gets dragged through the mud for the goats, but the maps are actually not that bad. First day experiments with giving the player a car and kind of works. The number of goats you need to collect is a tad much. Beat cops shoot sniper bullets and snipers themselves have some unfair sidelines. Second day is better and has a great escape sequence with different paths open each run. And the surprise roadblock at the end is a good last challenge. B tier. Golden Grin Casino. It's grandiose and looks impressive visually, but a bit over-designed. In stealth, it has a ton of different objectives, whose progress does not carry over when going loud. Thankfully, pre-planning is not an afterthought like in some heists. Civilian mode, however, feels pointless. And securing all 30 money bags? I'd rather not. A tier. Green Bridge. The beginning is chaotic, with cops spawning on both sides of the bridge. Escorting can be annoying, but usually isn't, due to Kozo's quick animations. The construction site is fun to fight in, and I like the helicopter turret interlude. Escaping at the end is also a blast, even though it's way easier than the first game. A tier. Heat Street. The sprint towards Matt at the beginning is iconic and hectic. On the other hand, escorting him is slow. But the heist makes up for this fact by forcing the player to almost always be on the move. I'm rather fond of the idea of a heist gone wrong, and Heat Street executes that struggle perfectly. A tier. Hell's Island. The starting area is frankly psychotic, with murkies coming from every direction and hitting like trucks. Once you finally get past that, free Bane and holy shit face reveal! Time limit at the end is tight and can trip you up if you don't get things done quickly. I enjoy the fast pace, but detest the track. What the fuck? Feature. Henry's Rock. The king of spawning enemies from every direction. Nowhere feels safe. Other than that, I love the Half-Life vibe and the fact that you randomly get two out of four rooms to complete makes repeat playthroughs more interesting. But did this map really need so many enemy spawn points? B tier. Hostile Takeover. Finally, a new era heist that lets players complete all tasks in any order. It doesn't assist you at all and you must have played it before to know what to do, but when you have, it's a blast to multitask and see how fast you can finish everything. I think it's the right way to go for Payday 3, just with an actually implemented multi-objective HUD system please. Oh, never mind. A tier. Hotline Miami. Let's get the obvious out of the way first. The soundtrack for both days is stellar. As for the mission, I like bullying the commissar and trying to clear out the motel as fast as possible. Hooking meth is faster, more streamlined, and is always worth it. Second day is also great in its own way. The beginning dash through the dilapidated building is exciting and different each time. Waiting for the drill can get boring, but shooting the commissar makes up for it. S tier. 
Hoxton breakout. Rescuing Hoxton was a pleasant surprise. Day one has you battling through the randomized streets of DC and it feels challenging but fair. The garage is a frantic search to find the correct door only to be greeted by <laughs> The second day is even better. It has a lot of randomized objectives and encourages the player to hunt for keycards to skip drills, open up healing or ammo rooms, close down pathways, or even gain access to a whole new section. Banger heist, banger music, S tier. Hoxton Revenge. Time to find the rat and get the evidence, which ends up being the trickier part of the heist. It has two tasks in stealth followed by a time lock to prevent ECM rushes. Fun to traverse, but I would have hoped for something more inspired than a drill on loud. A drill you have to wait to get for some reason. B tier. Jewelry store. Too simple for its own good and is barely even a heist for that reason. Mindlessly waiting for drills is something I hope we have less of in Payday 3. It can be rushed in a few seconds on lower difficulties and that at least helped me grind for those cards back in the day. Each year. Lab rats. Overkill continues its sacred tradition with shit Halloween heists by making us cook meth with ridiculous spawn rates and headless dozers. Getting shot from every direction, 9 bags per serving, no thanks. F tier. Lost in transit. This map really loves timers. Four minutes at the end is expected, but three minutes at the beginning is new. You need to block the train tracks, implying that these wagons will somehow attach themselves and drive off. Putting aside these arbitrary time limits, the mission is perfectly fine. If not a bit uninteresting because it isn't anything we haven't done before, but it achieves everything it sets out to do and earns a B tier. Malt Grasher. Destroying instead of stealing as an objective is hardly ever used in this game, and it works surprisingly well here. Too bad you gotta wait for over 5 minutes for that chopper though. C tier. Meltdown. The whole heist feels like a beta test for vehicles and loud. The forklifts are funny the first time, but get old quick. And you kinda have to use them since taking the warheads on foot is not an option. At least you can bring them to the Longfellow all at once if you finagle them right. C tier. Midland Ranch. It's mid alright. The heist gives you a choice of which part you want to do first that ends up not mattering since you need to do both either way. Now letting you do them both at the same time would have been cool. The house is big and oddly empty and loud. The other section introduces stationary machine guns and they're useless as ever. Now the best addition in this heist is of course the golf cart. Oh and did I mention this epic set piece? Wow. B tier. Mountain Master. It's barely great. The hotel lobby is a good starting section and loud, but feels too cramped in stealth. Once you zipline up to the penthouse, I wish it was possible to drill the server room and start opening the reinforced door at the same time. The boss at the end is quite threatening and fun to take down. That is what I would say if his hitbox wasn't broken and he wasn't essentially invincible to shotguns. And trying to make him out in stealth is probably a bigger challenge than actually killing him. The boss aside, the map itself is expansive and well designed. A tier. Murky Station. You gotta love a good sneak only heist. It introduces nifty drone cameras, has plenty of different wagon and key item spawn locations. Apart from the additional loot, which can be a hassle to carry, this one's a joy to replay and is definitely one of the better stealth missions on this list. A tier. Nightclub. You'd think we'd have more club heists in this game, but this is the only one. Yes, making warehouses was more of overkill style. Stealth is irritating with cams and encourages restarting until you get none. Three doors, two saves, and an unnecessary three minute wait time when you get them open? At least you can secure the bags in the pickup truck before going AFK. See cheer. No mercy. It's very compact and it kind of works. Having such a tight and small map offers a different gameplay experience, that's for sure. Stealth is weird and can be really frustrating with the inconsistent civilian AI and that one sieve that goes for the alarm without even being alerted. Also, if you can manage to identify the body, that skips like 50% of the heist, since in loud, those drill times have no mercy, and the RNG can really screw you here. And I don't know about you, but I like the original song better. Beat here. Panic room. I really like the premise of blowing up a building and flying the vault itself out. Skips the bag moving, you know? Spawning snipers one by one for over five minutes for an objective is a strange choice, and telling the player to clear the roof is misleading, since bile only lands at the end of the assault. Ignoring these minor inconveniences, it's a really good time. A tier. Prison Nightmare. What's this? A good Halloween heist? It can't be. Big cloaker with random attacks? Check. Good map design with an engaging gameplay loop? Check. A well done escape sequence? I can't believe it. Gets a badge for best Halloween heist. B tier. Rats. Cooking on day one is worth it, but the wait between adding the ingredients is too long. At least now, Bane corrects himself after giving you the wrong instructions. Second day's map is barely used, unless you randomly get betrayed on the deal, which is never fun. The option to steal back the meth is cool though. I swear some update broke day three because the cartel members all leave the bus to rush you now. The whole thing feels inconsistent, but that's just how it is with three day heists in this game, I guess. B tier. Reservoir Dogs Heist. Starting on day 2 is a neat concept, but creates confusion with what loot is worth securing. First, no, second day is fun, chaotic, and the chipper music weirdly fits. The second first day is a hectic heist gone wrong, the street outside the jewelry store is a death trap, and inside isn't that safe either. It's a struggle from beginning to end. A tier. 
Safe house night. Shut up, it's bad, F. Moving on. Safe house raid. It's a shame that this only uses 50% of the safe house. So much more could have been done in terms of objectives and upgrades making a difference in game. For now, it's an unimpressive 15 minute-ish holdout. E tier. San Martin Bank. After border crossing, I didn't know what to expect. And what we got is a very decent bank heist. The bank itself is well designed, looks great, and the objectives make sense. I would have toned it down with the turret and sniper spawns on the outside, but that's just me. Otherwise, good effort. A tier. Santa's Workshop. I don't have much to say about this. At the start it looks like you can stealth it, but triggers an automatic alarm the second you enter the workshop. The whole thing is far too goofy for my tastes, but I guess that's the point. D tier. Scarface Mansion. An almost perfect experience. A twist on stealth with all of the outside guards not carrying pagers requires some different tactics. It feels really restrictive inside the mansion with a copious amount of pager wearing guards, but that just ends up making the map more compelling and fun to navigate, since it forces you to go in and out of the mansion using the many outside entry points. Loud is great too, dumping Sosa's cars into the sea and hearing him scream is funny, Sosa himself doesn't take a million bullets to take down, and as a little bonus, this heist is accompanied by the best track in the game, S tier. Shacklethorn Auction. Apart from its very cool spooky mansion setting, it doesn't exactly bring anything new to the table, but everything it does, it does very well. I do also appreciate the fact that you can still use the keycard in loud in order to skip the drill even though you're not instructed to pick it up. A tier. Shadow Raid. Your premier stealth heist. A big sandbox environment with plenty of freedom of approach and great pre-planning options. Adds variation to repeat playthroughs with loot randomization, guard placements and the helicopter arrival. And for the daring, some expensive loot to secure. If it just wasn't a dull warehouse. A cheer. Slaughterhouse. It has a really cool introduction and I just cherish these conveyor belts. It'd be cool if there was an option to skip ahead and send the first container on its way before having to secure all the bags. That would save some time because now waiting around for the containers takes way too long. And you gotta love this goofy trap. A tier. Stealing Christmas. On the silly side, but a decent overall heist with a fair amount of randomness and an insane Christmas tree escape. I didn't mention this before, but I also enjoy the fact that Vlad interacts with the heisters during his missions. B tier. Transport Heists Any self-respecting heisting game needs to have an armored transport hit, and this one has five, all similar in execution and with the same flaws. Wanting to do them quickly and efficiently requires two different utilities and does very much limit build choice. And even then, you don't have enough C4 solo. Getting gold just makes me sad. All maps are very open and cops spawn from all sides, so standing behind cover and still getting shot is a common occurrence. Since these missions are very much alike, I'm going to go through them very quickly. Street Escape in heist form and Snipers Galore. I like that the offices on each side are explorable. Uh. Uh, has even less cover than usual and not that interesting. Has the best atmosphere out of the bunch, and here they all are in the tier list. Transport Train Heist The design is weird. The whole section below the train is barely used and the bridge is narrow and not that fun to move around. Saws are finicky in stealth and getting the shore escape makes me cringe every time. Drilling the ammo vaults first and loud feels punishing and means having to wait once more to drill the final vault before it lets you secure any bags. Oh, and did I mention? 20 mandatory loot bags? Not including the turret of course. D tier. Ukrainian job. Jewelry store again. Awesome. E tier. The Ukrainian prisoner. Another warehouse map please, yes sir. Apart from how uninteresting the map looks, it has a cool concept. After breaking out Vlad that the cops make no attempt to stop at any point during the heist, you get to choose your own path. It flows well, keeps you on the move and I always make the effort to press the buttons for that extra loot. A tier. Undercover. I like the map's layout and unique premise, but they could have shaved off the beginning few minutes of the heist because now it's a bit of a chore to have to wait for the tax man to pick up the hard drive. Funnily enough, Alex missing the rooftop gives you an easy saw to defend while him dropping the car on the roof and it staying there is GG. Taking the tax man to the computer room can be aggravating, but at least it lets you show him some unadulterated violence as revenge. A tier. Watch dogs. I have a bone to pick with this mission. 12 bags, 3 and a half minutes before you even know what corner of the map you need to take them to? Your reward? A second day in a warehouse with 12 more, and with a limit of 4 bags secured at a time. To be fair, you only need to secure 4 before leaving, so C tier? The White House. The whole thing feels grandiose. Heisting iconic White House locations like the press room and Oval Office is very cool. It's big, impressive visually, and fun to explore. Both loud and stealth are properly challenging, and the Piak is a doozy. It might be too arduous at times, but I think that's fitting for a final heist before the story's end. Fortunately, you don't have to bag up those pardons either. S tier. White Christmas. A mediocre Christmas heist. The foresty setting is nice and I've escorted worse, but in the end it's just a bad collectathon and as some of you have noticed, I'm not a huge fan of infinite loot maps either. C tier. The Yacht Heist. What an incredible mission to end on. A simple objective that utilizes the whole yacht and rewards map knowledge. No cameras allow for a more aggressive playstyle and the server room blocks ECM rushes. The amount of guards and civs is just right and makes for a wonderful sneaking experience. Also, the jazzy track complements the heist well and dynamically builds up as you progress. S tier. 
And that's the list. As you can see currently, it's ordered alphabetically. For anyone interested, I'll also rank these heists in their own tiers as well. Flashback. Now, they're ordered worst to best. It's worth mentioning that while I am confident in what tiers I put these missions in, I am less so in their individual rankings. For example, I don't necessarily think that Beneath the Mountain is better than Hostile Takeover, but I definitely think that it's better than Big Oil. Also, if you'd ask me tomorrow, I might even reshuffle some heists around. For now, that's it for me, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.